Hello guys, today we are going to talk about glycogenolysis which is basically glycogen degradation but before that please make, to sh make sure to subscribe to the channel and listen to, let's hit it to 100 subscribers. So um, coming to glycogenolysis or glycogen, it is basically breakdown of glycogen. Now glycogen is actually a polysaccharide. So uh, this breakdown occurs in liver and muscle cells. Uh, it occurs in livers because it needs to maintain the glucose level in muscle. And glycogen is broken into glucose for energy purposes, uh, especially when we are exercising. And in fasting, especially glycogen is, uh, that is stored is uh, broken down so that we can get glucose for energy and to maintain the uh, glucose level in the blood. So, um, it provides, because glucose provides uh, immediate energy and it maintains the glucose levels during fasting. And it is the uh, primary carbohydrate that is stored in muscle and liver uh, glycogen, okay. And um, synthesis and degradation of glycogen are irreversible and uh, they are independent. And so, uh, and in cytosol, they are a group of enzymes that are specifically uh, that carry out glycogenolysis so where does glycogenolysis occurs it occurs in liver and muscle and its site is of course in the cytoplasm of their cells enzymes involved in glu uh, glycogenolysis are uh, number one we have a glycogen uh, phosphorylase and then we have deep branching enzyme which we also call alpha 1 4 transferase and then we have alpha 1 4 and 1 6 glucodiase and uh, also uh, glucose 6-phosphatase so these are the enzymes now what are the basic steps of uh, glycogenolysis well first is action of glycogen phosphorylase so the enzyme is gonna act on our large molecule of glycogen and then we have uh, action of deep branching enzyme which is basically formation of glucose uh, and the third is uh, formation of glucose so in the step one is action of glycogen phosphorylase so what glycogen uh, so we have our glycogen molecule and uh, it is made up of in a straight chain it is made up of 18 molecules so coming to glycogenolysis so first we have a molecule of uh, we're going to draw the glycogen molecule and it is made up of 18 molecules so there are three basic steps action of glycogen first for this action of deep branching enzyme and the third one is formation of glucose so we're going to discuss these so basically we have a first draw a straight chain in which we have 18 molecules of glucose attached so you draw four on this side and on the fifth one we're going to draw a branching glycogen a glucose we're just going to attach glucose molecules now there are one to six on the branching one so you draw one to six okay and the linkage between uh, we have between the straight ones are actually alpha one four and between the branching we have uh, uh, one six okay now um, we draw the molecules till we have 18 glucose molecules practice along as it will help you also so we have drawn this chain now when glycogen level rises the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase it gets activated and in the first step is basically action of uh, phosphor uh, glycogen phosphorylase so what it does it gets activated and it takes out two straight uh, um, three glucose molecules from the straight chain so from 18 we're left with 15 and uh, it takes two out from the um, uh, from the branch in so it takes out these two amino acids and this is by action of glycogen phosphorylase okay and why is it called glycogen because well it acts on glycogen and how does it act it does so by using phosph uh, phosphorus so phosphorylase okay glycogen phosphorylase now next uh, the chain left we call it actually limit dextrin because now it's uh, I got a limit and dextrin is actually a polymer of glucose so it's also called limit dextrin 
next uh, uh, next step is the debranching and it is done uh, by glycogen transferase and it removes two three four uh, two uh, or three more glucose molecules and adds them to straight chain which has nine glucose molecules so you see in the branching chain we had one to four now we're gonna uh, remove the three glucose molecules from the branching into the straight chain and this is done by um, the molecule which is known as glycogen transferase glycogen transferase and uh, it moves the three glucose molecules out of the four in the branching side in, in into the straight chain okay don't get confused we're going slowly so you can understand so it adds it there okay so now only one glucose molecule is attached on the top now this is a detailed version of glycogenolysis okay now the one glucose molecule that was hanging on the chain it's actually freed by one six glycodi uh, glycodiase glycosidase enzyme because um, because it breaks the um, alpha 1 6 linkage so it is uh, called uh, 1 6 glycosidase okay now in this step this from the straight chain we actually remove three molecules of glucose and there we remove it three times so that's why we go from 18 molecules to 9 molecules in the straight chain okay and as a result we have four molecules on this side and four molecules on this side and four on the top so it's uh, and this occurs uh, this is the starting of branching. okay now we have removed one of the uh, glucose from the whole chain the one that was branching we removed it by one six glycodiadase and uh, now uh, we're gonna uh, break down remaining of the glycogen molecule so the next uh, third step we read was that it was uh, break, uh, break down to glucose so we're gonna do that how we're gonna do that well basically phospholyrase uh, enzyme it performs this action and what it does is basically break the one for glycosidic bonds and release the uh, glucose molecules one by one and so it's uh, basically the step of phospholysis and it's repeated again and again 12 times because our whole chain is made up of 12 molecules so we're gonna repeat it again and again till we have 12 uh, each of the glucose molecule released so we have 12 glucose molecules released by the action of phospholyrase lyrase enzyme this is the one that uh, um, does it now what are we gonna do with each of the glucose molecule now with the remaining glucose molecule we add a phosphate to it and the enzyme that uh, adds to it is basically also phosphorylase and we add first we draw the structure of um, glucose molecule so we have CHO first we draw that and I'm gonna tell the adjustments that we make first draw the six carbon chain and then you add CH2 on the bottom and then OH uh, along OH, OH, and the third we have of course H at the side, and then we have OH, H, and then H, H, okay. Now on the top one we write actually double car, uh, C, double O, O, P. Now this P came from where the phosphate group that we added, so we call this molecule glucose 1 phosphate, okay and uh, now next we do is we isomerize it and this isomerization is by which enzyme phospholyrase mutase so this one converts it in uh, phospholyrase mutase that's isomerization and what uh, what happens in isomerization well phospholyglycomutase it moves the uh, phosphorus group from there and so op is removed and we get the hydrogen back which is the aldehyde group and it moves it at the bottom so in the bottom we have CH2O instead of the H we get a phosphorus there so we call this glucose 6 phosphate easy next with the help of the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate we uh, move release that phosphate group from the glucose uh, molecule completely by adding water now when we add water 
why we're adding water because when the phosphate is gonna be removed we need an H with the oxygen so that H comes from the H2O okay so at the end we get um, our glucose molecule so this is how glucose is released because basically glycogen is glucose molecule we're just breaking down the chain how do we break it first we break the branching one the branches that are made and then um, uh, we have the one that's left and then we break down it into individual glucose molecules and then we convert those individuals into phosphates and then back to glucose so you can see here now this uh, um, this step of uh, conversion of glucose 6 phosphate to glucose it occurs in living and kidney and not in muscle because uh, 6-phosphate enzyme is only present in liver and kidney. Now if we want to convert this step, uh, glucose 6-phosphate to phosphate, the muscles cannot convert it. They have to be they're converted by liver or uh, kidney because they have the 6-phosphate enzyme. And then the glucose, uh, so then glucose is made and then that glucose goes into the muscle and then uh, it uh, goes through glycolysis and we're releasing energy. So this is basically glycogenolysis. Now, now if you still need uh, some more information or extra information with this, if you're making notes, uh, but if you're listening to the topic, well, we're gonna talk about regulation of glycogenolysis, how glycogenolysis actually occurs. So first we have is allosteric uh, regulation. It is basically when substrate uh, will be an energy level is high, glycogenous synthesis is increased. So, and uh, when glucose concentration is low, energy level is low, glycogen breakdown is increased. So basically glycogenolysis is when we have low glucose molecules. And also uh, glucose 6-phosphate allosterically it activates glyco glycogen synthase and at the same time it inhibits glycogen phosphorylase so to if we um, in if we're well fed then glycogenolysis does not occur it only occurs uh, in liver uh, in liver and muscle and uh, when we need glucose and free glucose in liver is also uh, allostatic inhibitor of glycogen phosphorylase so if there is gl a free glucose molecules present in liver uh, glycogen does not occur so the things that make uh, th uh, glycogen occur but you do the opposite of that and they will stop the glycogenolysis so uh, if there's no glucose in the liver then we're going to do glycogenolysis if there is glucose in the liver that's going to inhibit it so that's uh, it uh, allosteric regulation is when there's a presence of another molecule and it regulates its uh, process next we have is hormonal regulation so it's basically uh, see uh, hormones they control glycogen synthesis and degradation by covalent uh, modification how is that so basically uh, cyclic amp it acts as a second messenger and it activates protein kinase and then protein kinase it causes phosphorylation of enzymes by either activating or deactivating them so basically it is cl uh, closed through cyclic AMP, amp and now uh, in muscles so um, of course glycogenolysis occurs in muscles so uh, when muscle contracts uh, calcium ions they are released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and they bind to the protein uh, uh, calmuldolin and they activate phosphorylase kinase without the involvement of saccharin mp and uh, and now when there is elevated glyco uh, glyco uh, glucagon or epinephrine level it increases actually glycogen degradation so basically when there is high nephrine epinephrine and also when there is high glucagon they increase the degradation of uh, glycogen uh, which uh, um, whereas an elevated insulin results in gl uh, increased glycogen synthesis so basically when we have more glucagon it causes glycogenolysis and when we have less of it it does not and when we have low insulin uh, high insulin it causes glycogenolysis and uh, yeah and also epinephrine also causes uh, glycogenolysis so that's it for glycogenolysis i hope you guys understood it. it's basically the breakdown of glycogen that's it and if you want the simple version simple cycle well this is a flow chart so we have phosphorylase enzyme cyclic amp acting on it uh, this is the process okay so glucose one phosphate then converts into glucose six phosphate and then we have glucose molecule and so um 
this is also another so we have glucose 1 6 phosphate this this you can add the phosphate like this and you can do it like this branching enzyme or you can do it in the straight chain form so yeah that's it i hope you guys understood this lecture if you have any question you make sure to ask in the comments and make sure to subscribe also and let's get it to 100 subscribers it shows your great support thank you